morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning, and I'll turn your attention to the messenger for announcements. This Thursday at 1030, we have Ron Fell's uh, memorial service, and this week also begins the midweek Lenten services at 12 noon and 7 o'clock. The noon service will be a Taizé prayer service, and the 7 o'clock will be Holden evening prayer, and there's soup suppers every Wednesday from 5 to 6.30, 6.45-ish. And you can see who's hosting those soup suppers, what committees on your bulletin, so check that out to know if you're supposed to bring some soup. And other announcements, I got two. You and you, I'm assuming. I just, this, we're talking about the mission again. We've talked about the mission to Appalachia. We're doing the final, finalizing of all the, the uh, arrangements, and we've got a couple dates, and we're going to confirm that tomorrow. We have the sign-up sheets there that was there, not last Sunday, because we didn't have Sunday worship, but the Sunday before. And uh, so if any one of you are interested in a mission to Appalachia this summer, please let me know. Uh, let me know, or Mark Heron, or Jennifer Ott, just let us know so that we can inc- include you in this, uh, which would be our first gr- start of an annual mission that our church is involved with. So thanks a lot. This wouldn't be anything about the... Um, just so you know, there's Lego bricks back here right outside the sanctuary. Um, if you can grab one on your way out, it's there's one for each child in Sunday school right now. And if you take it and pray for that child throughout the Lenten season, it's just something to help encourage the kids, help and to know that someone is praying for them and thinking about them every day. So if you wouldn't mind grabbing one on the way out, I would appreciate it. I would like to tender an invitation. I belong to a group called Springfield Mid-America Singers. We're having a concert on the 25th at Redeemer Lutheran Church, three in the afternoon. It's free. And this is actually the 50th anniversary of our seasons of singing. We have a fellow coming from Uh, Pennsylvania or or Ohio, the original founder who's going to direct several pieces that he selected. Three o'clock, I believe that'll be next Sunday, the 25th, at Redeemer Lutheran, and it's free. Thank you.
service we do not say the creed until Christ's resurrection and we are in a state of confession for the next five weeks and so you will not hear the absolution uh, until Monday Thursday when you'll hear the so from Ash Wednesday to Monday Thursday we confess so let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot free free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have said something. We acted when we knew better. We were still when we know we should have moved. For the wrong we have done, for the good we have failed to do, have mercy on us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In Christ have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Amen. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. 
and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Maybe uh, the peace of Christ be with you all. Please share the peace with one another. Peace be with you. If they want to uh, join in the kids' message. All right. Well, let's pretend that you have a friend whose birthday is coming up and you and your other friends, you're planning a surprise birthday party for her. Uh, we'll call her Dakota, okay? And you promised each other you're not going to tell Dakota what uh, about her surprise birthday party. And then Dakota shows up and she's telling everyone, hey, my birthday is tomorrow. Does anybody know what people are doing for my birthday? I really want to know. So what would you do? Would you tell Dakota about the surprise party, or would you keep it a secret like you promised? You'd keep it a secret? Why would you keep it a secret? Because your friends promised? Yeah, because you made that promise. Well, the story this morning didn't have a secret that needed to be kept, but Jesus did make a promise to pay attention to God. And then is tempted to not do that. Um, tempted is a fast, fancy word that means um, that he had a chance to break his promise that he made to God. But he didn't break that promise. And by not doing that, Jesus provides us an example to push through those temptations and keep our promise to God and to follow um, just as he taught us to follow and uh, keeping our promise to pay attention to God and that Jesus proved to be a good teacher for us. So that's our good news. Let's pray. Thank you for Jesus who kept his promise to pay attention to you, God, and then showed us how to do the same. So thank you, and amen. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> there are four Gospels found in our Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And each of these books presents a very different portrait of Jesus. Did you know that? Every single one's a different portrait of Jesus. They have very distinct confessions of faith and of good news. They were written for different communities of faith, so they have a different audience, each one that they're written for, and those audiences had particular concerns and setbacks and what we find is that even though the Gospels were written for a particular time to a particular people, and times have changed, obviously, people haven't. And so they are still relevant to this day. 
The Gospel of Mark is probably the first gospel that was written. And it keeps the story simple. There's not a lot of details. There aren't a lot of adjectives. There aren't a lot of adverbs. And it's filled with urgency. Again and again and again, you'll hear a sentence begin with, and immediately, immediately, immediately. And Jesus is this urgency that he's launched into his ministry and mission. So we've got the story of the baptism of Jesus, and it's a pinnacle event, but he doesn't hang out there very long because the Spirit of God drives and pushes him into this time of testing and temptation in the wilderness. The text is read often on the first Sunday of Lent because it speaks of the 40 days in wilderness, and Lent is a 40-day journey. And hopefully your Lenten journey will be filled with opportunities for prayer, for reflection, for meditation. And so I thought to help you in this time and something to reflect and meditate on during this time is to dig deeper into the meaning of the cross for the book of Mark. Because we'll be reading the book of Mark pretty much all of this year. With a little John scattered in there, but for the most part, this year will be about the book of Mark. So the passion narrative, so that's what we call the story of the cross and Jesus' uh, uh, crucifixion. It's called the passion narrative. It's very important to Mark's short story narrative. The passion makes up one-third of Mark's gospel. It consists of five scenes. First is the disciples and Jesus share the Last Supper, instituting what we call communion. We celebrate this generally during Holy Week on Monday, Thursday. As well as the praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus' capture. And then there is the questioning by religious authorities and Peter's denial. The Romans questioning by Pontius Pilate. Crucified, died, and buried. This is usually what we uh, recognize and remember on what's called Good Friday. So who is this Jesus that we meet in the book of Mark? Jesus is described as being filled with fear, agitation, anxiety, that he is utterly frozen in panic, and in deep pain while he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane. Are you familiar with that painting that, I don't know, my grandma had it, and that's in a lot of church basements of the meditative, very calm, soulful Jesus praying by the rock in the Garden of Gethsemane? That is not Mark's Jesus at all. That is not a portrayal of the Mark's Jesus. So why not? Why not that calm, stoic, one who's come to save the day, superhero Jesus? Because that isn't the story that we need to hear when we are in the throes of it. When we are experiencing serious challenges and struggles and hardships, when That isn't good news when we're being beaten down, when we're persecuted, when we're exhausted and worn out by daily worry and pain and grief and sorrow. That is just not a good news. And the community of Christians that Mark is speaking to are experiencing some some pretty serious challenges. Many of them had been caught up in the Jewish-Roman War, which ended in the complete destruction of the Jerusalem Temple. All that exists of it today is what we call the Wailing Wall in Israel. Many had endured persecutions, thrown to the lions and other such events. These people were brokenhearted. They were a community that was struggling to stay in existence. They were suffering. Some of them 
had denied their faith under the threat of persecution. Some had just lost their faith altogether. And some of the folks who had left were desiring to come back and afraid they would not be welcomed. So the Gospel of Mark is a story that you read when you're in that place, that depressed, anxious, shame-filled, defeated place. The big purpose of Mark is to tell you the story of the cross and support Christians by letting us know that Jesus also suffered and understands what it is to go through that. The disciples fall asleep, even though Jesus scolds them and warns them not to do it. And then they all abandon him. They left. And Judas, his friend, betrays him. And later Peter, who tries to stay faithful, follows the soldiers to the military compound, but upon recognition, he denies Jesus three times. So Peter, the rock on which I build my church, crumbles. Mark lets us know that even Christians who become afraid, who aren't dependable, who deny their faith, can still be disciples and followers of Jesus. And after Jesus' crucifixion, the women who were the only to remain, they stay till the bitter end. The women were not even considered to have full human rights. At the time, women and children were the property of their husbands and fathers. That's why the Bible says again and again to care for the widows and for the orphans because they were the poorest of the poor, the the ones with no rights. So Mark also says, on top of all of this, so you got your lowest of the low who are the ones who stay faithful to the end. And then Mark says, the rip. The curtain rips when Jesus breathes his last breath. That curtain was the one found in the temple that separated the sanctuary from a space called the Holy of Holies. And that's where the priest would go once a year after a cleansing rite and would be in the presence of God. So by ripping that curtain... It meant nothing contained or separated us from God, that God was let loose in the world. And then there's the cross. And the cross wasn't a beloved icon. It wasn't something people painted or wore or hung in their homes or tattooed on their bodies as a sign of Christian affiliation. No, they, in Mark's writing, the cross was primarily a form of execution. It was an instrument of execution that was used particularly by the Romans to punish lower class criminals. Crosses were meant to be a very slow death by asphyxiation. And all the while, your body, the body of the criminal, would be on full display for everyone, functioning as a cheap warning sign to any would-be Christian uh, criminal. This could be you. And the story of God coming in a cross, dying on a cross, has lost its shock value to us today. But basically, it's saying God came in a dead man walking. So when you read the Gospel of Mark, you learn a few things. You learn that God always shows up in the least expected places. The disciples were made up of people who felt pretty low and down and out and never really got it. We learn that you don't have to be a perfect, powerful Christian to follow or meet God, that God actually meets us where we are, right in the middle of our suffering and our fear and our pain, and God can identify with all of us. And if you're looking for the superhero God, uh, you probably should read the book of Matthew because you aren't going to find it in the book of Mark. You'll be very disappointed. God comes to be with us. 
to hold on to us through our suffering, stay with us even through death. And then there is the ending of Mark and the women. The women who stuck by Jesus to the end. And you can't read the book of Mark without dealing with its shocking ending. Because you see, when the steadfast and faithful women come to the end of the book of Mark, they too abandon him. And that ending freaks people out for two reasons. One, Jesus doesn't show up in the end of the book of Mark. He's gone, and we don't see him. There is no appearance. There is no revelation. He's gone. And the women totally fail him. So even, even that last bit of faithful diehards fail him. They run away. They don't tell anyone. It says that they told no one for fear and terror overwhelmed them. So even the most faithful are overwhelmed. No one is a hero in the end of Mark. Which is probably why a short and longer ending were added to the book so that we'd have some sort of like closure and nice happy ending to it because we're not comfortable with and no one said a thing. But Mark's point is that no one followed through and stayed with Jesus. That we all fail to be good Christians at some point in our journey. And yet in this story, in this whole book of Mark, there is one person. There is one person in this story who followed Jesus, who stood by the cross, who kept through with him to the nitty-gritty, who heard the news that he had risen and shared it. And you know who that person is? You. You, the reader. Because everyone failed and the story is still being told to this day. That this story, this gospel, this good news is not dependent upon us and our success as a good Christian. That it has a power beyond our abilities. That it still gets told. Mark's good news is we have another chance. We have another chance to go, to tell, to share the story of Jesus, that we are redeemed. That Mark offers the most human account of Jesus, one we can identify with, one that inspires us, one that is good news in our deepest and darkest moments. And that God comes to meet us, not in our strength and in our power, but right in the middle of our suffering that nothing separates us from God. In fact, God is let loose in the world. And God wants us to go and tell others. And that, thanks be to God, is our truth. Amen. Please rise and sing as we share our tithes and offerings.
places, for favorable weather, sustaining rains, for creatures awakening from hibernation, the beginning of seasonal migrations, that there may be provided safe habitats and abundant food for all. We pray for the nations, for all who govern or hold positions of authority, those who work to make their community safe from violence. Protect all who place themselves in danger to save others from harm. We especially lift up all the people of the Florida school shooting, grant wisdom to our lawmakers in this time of crisis. We pray for those in need for those moving to new communities, for individuals who are incarcerated or recently released from prison, for those who are abused or neglected, for the lonely, for those who are ill. We especially lift up Larry Stilwell, Morris James, Vera Kimsey, Helen Jean Christensen, Bill Stoner, Greg McKinley, Valerie Brown. And we pray for this assembly, for musicians and artists and poets, who help us envision love through word, image, and song, for those faced with exclusion or felt forgotten, for all who reach out in love and welcome. And with Thanksgiving, we remember those who have died, especially Martin Luther, and in our own community, Ron Fells. May they receive the fulfillment of your promises made to them in baptism. Sustain us in hope of resurrection life with you. This and so much more we lift up in our prayers to you, O oh God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Whenever we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we do so, remembering Christ died, Christ risen, and Christ shall come again. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The meal is prepared, and all are welcome to receive this meal of forgiveness. We'll commune along the railings. You may stand or kneel as you are able. You'll receive bread and then dark liquid, which is wine, or light liquid, which is grape juice. And there are gluten-free elements available. Just let your server know. Come, let us eat.
invite you to please stand and receive the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace always. Amen. And now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ go with you in this blessed week. The Lord be with you. Amen.
Have you?